Shalom, Ya Sharala. First and foremost, I'd like to start this lesson by giving all praises, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Rechaha Kodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well and taught me this 100% truth. Double salutations to the Archeum out there, spreading this word in truth and sincerity. And Shalom to the few Akwath that are listening in today. <clears throat> I'm back at you with another lesson A quick little lesson entitled What we're fighting for In which uh, <coughs> Excuse me <it's> lucky. <clears throat> What we are fighting for Is the kingdom of heaven Okay We know and understand Or we should know and understand that You know Pursuant to Micah 2 and 10 This place is not our rest And we're seeking The kingdom of heaven man You know and we're storing up our treasures in heaven where moth and dust doth not corrupt, okay? So, you know, um, we don't just labour and endure hardness in this truth for no reason. And we do it for an expected outcome. And that is to, Lord willing, be numbered amongst the hopeful elect. Okay, that's what we endure all trials and uh, uh, tribulations for in this truth. Okay, in hopes that we would be the first fruits in the kingdom of heaven, man. All right, because that that that's the goal, man. Okay, that's the goal ultimately in this truth. All right. <clears throat> so um, let's bring out the precepts, man, just to you know further emphasize this point. So this is Revelation twenty one and verse one, and it reads, "And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven." And the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, and, you know, pretty much this is talking about, um, you know, Esau, Edom's rulership is going to be done with, man. All right. And the kingdom of heaven is going to be established. Right. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem or New Jerusalem, coming down from the most high out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband now this is talking about the elect coming out of the chariot you know coming back down on earth and 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 you know setting things up man setting up shop okay rounding up the edomites the other nations the slaves appointing them their their first task and which uh in the kingdom of heaven there's going to be continual employment man okay going to be continual employment okay Verse 3 <clears throat> You know Jeremiah 16 and 16 as well Quickly just to make the point Says how At first I will send for many fishers And then for many hunters man Because you know right now The prophets of the Lord are doing the fishing Fishing for the elect And then uh, when they're endowed With that spiritual power Then they're going to be turned into hunters man Alright Hunting down these elite banking families Hunting down those that survived World War Three, rounding them up as slaves, okay, setting up order, right? Verse 3, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of the Most High is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and the Most High himself shall be with them and be their power. All right, this is talking about the Israelites being joined back unto the Heavenly Father, man. You know, the Heavenly Father is no longer going to turn his face away from from his people, man. His people being the Israelites, and he's he's not going to do that because um, um, there there will be no more sin in the kingdom of heaven. Okay, well, 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 no more sin amongst the Israelites in the kingdom of heaven. The other nations are still going to be in the flesh, subject under the law, and of course they're going to go off, and we're going to bring that judgment, man. But amongst the Israelites, there's going to be no more sin. Okay. So the Most High, he's going to dwell with us, man, because he's not going to look at us as we're unclean anymore. Okay. Verse 4, And the Most High shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Yeah, man. So, you know, right now we're here suffering in Esau, Edom's kingdom. We're at the bottom and, you know, we're not respected, we're not regarded, all right? We have to deal with all sorts of hell, man. But, but you know, there's going to be no more pain, no more sorrow, no more crying, 
and and those things are going to be passed away man we ain't going to know what it feels like to feel negative emotions anymore man because our life is going to be bliss all right our lives as israelites in the kingdom are going to be bliss man especially if you're numbered amongst the elect okay because there's an order to everything verse 5 and he that sat upon the throne said behold i make all things new and he said unto me right for these words are true and faithful so you know it doesn't matter if two-thirds of our people don't believe in this truth man these words are are true and faithful man and 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 you know they're going to come to pass regardless on whether two-thirds of the nation of israel believe or whether, whether they receive it or not you see verse 6 and he said unto me it is done i am the alpha and omega the beginning and the end i will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely yeah so you know you're not meant to be charging for the truth man you know you're just meant to same way you freely receive the truth you freely give man you got people trying to turn this whole truth into a, a money making scheme you know just just doing things for filthy lucre's sake okay verse 7 he that overcometh shall inherit all things and I will be his power and he shall be my son. And you see, we're hoping and praying that the Lord will have his spirit on us where we can overcome all things, man. Okay, whether it means we have to lose our job, lose our family, lose our woman, lose our lives. All right, no matter what it is, man, we're we hoping that, that um, um, we'll, we'll be able to, uh, to be found worthy to overcome and, and to be numbered amongst the elect. Okay. Verse 8, but the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Okay, so what was the first death? The first death was when uh, the Most High Yahweh destroyed this earth by way of water, okay, during the time of Noah. And the second death is going to be by nuclear destruction, man, nuclear fire. Okay. Verse 9. There came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the, se full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither. I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. Okay. And who's this talking about? This is talking about the elect, you know. The nation of Israel is likened unto a comely and delicate woman unto the heavenly father, man. All right, so the lamb's wife here is talking about the elect of the nation of Israel. Okay, the one third. Verse 10, and he carried me away in the spirit to a great high, to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from the most high. Again, this is the elect coming out of uh, the chariot of the Lord. And, and coming back down on the earth to, to, to set things right, okay? So let's go on to... So this is what we're fighting for, man. You know, we want to be numbered amongst the elect. <clears throat> we want to be found worthy to be the first fruits, to inherit the kingdom of heaven, to see the kingdom of heaven being established from the very beginning, not coming back in the kingdom as a newborn baby when things are already happening, man. So, you know, Lord willing... You be numbered amongst the elect. This is Psalms chapter 2 and verse 8. Ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Okay, so we're getting ready to inherit the whole earth, man. Not, not just a segment of it, but the whole entire earth. The whole entire universe under Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. Okay, that's a great blessing, man. That's why scriptures say, I have not seen nor ear heard the things which the... Heavenly Father has prepared for those that wait for him. All right, we just need to do our bit, labor in the truth, endure until the end, and Lord willing, we be numbered amongst the elect, man. Okay, verse 9 Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron, thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. And that's that's what we're that's how we're going to be dealing with these other nations, man. Okay, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity, man. We're going to recompense onto these other nations double, man. Beginning with the nation of Esau, Esau is going to be in the worst case scenario. Okay. Verse 10. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and trembling. 
Salaki. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Okay. Kiss the sun, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way, when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. So those that put their trust in Yahweh Bashim Yahshai are going to be blessed, man. We need to serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling, man. Okay? That that that's the right thing to do. And and by doing these things, it gives you uh, the best possible chance. The so lucky I can't speak today, man. It gives you the best possible chance of being a member of the elect, man. Okay. Let's go to Psalms 149. It's a quick little lesson through the spirit, man. Psalms 149 and verse 3. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and harp. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Okay, so the meek, which are the Israelites right now, you know, we're... Uh, everything is flipped upside down, so we're really at the, at the bottom, bottom. And it should be Esau that's that's at the bottom bottom man but it's okay for Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth man okay so um verse 5 let the saints be joyful in glory let them sing aloud upon their beds let the high praises of the most high be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand and that's going to be a literal two-edged sword man and that's going to be used to 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 uh to what verse seven to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishment upon the people okay so uh um you know as as it said in psalm chapter two man we're going to rule over them with a rod of iron man okay we're going to be uh austere fierce rulers over these uh, uh heathens man mainly over the the, the nation of edom okay Um, so verse 8 To bind their kings with chains And their nobles with fetters of iron Alright they, they thought they could do that to us And get away with it And they wouldn't have to experience the same thing Or well, these, these Edomites are getting ready to experience the same thing man Okay but to a To a worse degree Okay Verse 9 To execute upon them the judgment written this honour have all his saints, praise you the Lord. And that's why it's important to do everything that we possibly can in our power to make sure we're numbered amongst the hopeful elect because, uh, you know, it's going to be an absolute honour to be ruling over these heathens, to be the first fruits of the kingdom of heaven, to receive that new body, to never die, right? So this is what we're fighting for, man, you see? Let's close out here. In Wisdom of Solomon 5, verse 15. But the righteous live forevermore. Their reward also is with the Lord. For the care of them is with the Most High. Okay, so the Lord, he cares about his elect, his remnant. He ain't going to forsake his remnant, right? Therefore shall they receive a glorious kingdom and a beautiful crown from the Lord's hand. Because you know Yahweh Shai is going to be crowning us, man. Okay, when we when we get up, when we get up in that chariot, man, that that great fathership. You know, Lord willing, we be worthy to be found amongst that um, number, man. Okay. Therefore, shall they take, shall they receive a glorious kingdom and a beautiful crown from the Lord's hand, for with His right hand shall He protect, shall He cover them, and with His arm shall He protect them. Okay. Because the Lord is going to fight for us, man Through his angels Through his men You know Certain men are going to be Bestowed with spiritual power Alright, so the Lord fights for us, man And he's going to cover us And protect us Okay Verse 17 He shall take to him His jealousy for complete armour And make the creature his weapon For the revenge of his enemies So yeah man Thou art my battle axe On weapons of war man The, the Lord is going to use His elect Right To Have their part In bringing down this kingdom Okay And you know It's only going to take the Lord One hour man To destroy this place 
Uh, the Lord is coming with, with, with all the armies, man. The nuclear missiles, they're an army. The angels are an army. You know, you got Yahweh Shah leading the angels. You got the, uh, uh, the elect here that's going to be raised up with spiritual power. Uh, certain members of the elect, man. So, you know, he's going to make his weapon. He's going to make the creature his weapon for the revenge of his enemies, man. So, yeah, man, this is exactly what we're fighting for. And this is what... Uh, we endure all hardness for man okay so yeah man i just wanted to touch on that quickly you know lord willing it's been an edifying lesson and until the next time i say shalom